This is A Year of the Guitar number 105. And today I was uh, working with a student on in a studio by Fernando Sor. Uh, this is the Opus 6 number 8, which appears in the Segovia edition as a studio number 1. It's one of my favorites because it's very simple sounding and yet has an incredible amount of complexity. There are many, many lessons that a student can derive from this. And so I enjoyed working with this student on this particular piece and I thought I'd share that uh, on this video diary. So this is one of those things where if you are a player, a student, you probably sh will get some kind of benefit from this and, and should study the piece. And if you're, if you're not actually a player, you'll get a little idea of uh, the workings of a piece of music, this particular piece, as well as the approach that I take, the interpretive approach and how I come to a piece of music. So, the piece begins with a very simple progression. And that's the first phrase. Now, in that phrase, <clears throat> we've got three separate melodies going. We've got the top melody. Then there's the middle voice, the middle melody. Finally, the lower part. So the goal is, of course, to put those together and do it in a musical fashion that shows both the three voices working together and yet uh, allows the integrity of each voice to come through separately. So. continues. So in that section, of course we have a melody that coming in right here, which is then imitated up there. So once again, is the inner voice, right? So, so putting those together, comes one of my favorite parts because the challenge here is to play the dynamics the way that Segovia added them in. Now these were not Soar's original dynamics but um, they're certainly uh, interesting, make for some beautiful music and a, a wonderful challenge for students. Uh, in this line you have a chord played loud, forte, with a note underneath it played softly and then that melodic line gradually getting louder to a loud note which is played simultaneously with a chord played softly which then gets louder to a loud chord with 
a soft bass under it, which then gets louder, and that last note has a soft chord, which then gradually gets louder, with a soft note under it, getting louder, loud low note, softer chord, everything getting louder, getting louder, and then finally. So that passage The trick to playing that, at least the trick that I use, is my right hand motion so that when I need to emphasize the chord, I pull my hand up because that emphasizes these notes, makes me pull harder on it, while at the same time making it harder for me to play loud with the thumb because my thumb is moving away from the note that it's playing. So, and then loud with the thumb down so that my fingers index and middle play softer when they play the chord then getting louder then again moving up so that the chord is louder and the thumb moves away so that it's not as loud and then gradually louder and then moving down again then the next phrase comes in and part of the beauty in here is of course making sure that the notes uh, continue to ring out for their full duration that you're not picking fingers up um, in a way that causes the notes to stop ringing so there again let's see and then also there are three melodic things occurring at the same time. You've got the low voice, which is... putting them together and then playing through to the end. So the entire piece now.
Isn't that lovely?